This is an honor to receive this star alongside the many names and notables from the world of entertainment. Damn, I'm gonna sit up. I'm gonna read this shit, y'all, because I'm so emotional, ain't no way in the hell I'm gonna sit up here and remember all this shit. <laughs> Only 2,800 of them. This is something very special for me. This feel good as shit. <laughs> I'm proud as hell. When I first found out that this was happening, I kind of shrugged it off and said, yeah, that's cool. I didn't think much about it. I learned in the early on in this journey that you are only as big as your latest hit. So you had to keep things in perspective to keep from getting a big head. I found out there would be times when it seemed like everyone knew your name. Then there were times when no one knew you. I learned to respect the balance. If I needed to hear my name spoken out loud, I would go to the airport and page myself. <laughs> That's how fickle the ego is anyway. You know? Sometimes I might be alone in the mirror and think, I'm all that shit, I'm thinking I'm the bad motherfucker. <laughs> then I go ahead and flush the toilet along with the rest of the shit. <laughs> But this feel good. <laughs> wow. Some, oh, let me see. Truth is, I saw Frankie Lyman and the, and the teenagers had all the girls screaming, getting hot and bothered by singing. I wanted to do that. And then I saw the groups all around my neighborhood getting hit records. I was encouraged. Coming to Hollywood was a big deal. We were from Newark. So you could see New York, the Apollo Theater stage was always within reach. But the dream of being a star was first going to Detroit and sitting, sitting in a car across the street from Motown, watching all the stars go across the lawn, in and out. Thanks, Janie. <laughs> for giving me the encouragement to go on, even though Motown had rejected us because we didn't look as cool as the Temptations. You know what I'm saying? We were short and tall and you look like a ladder. But you encouraged me and that motivated me to look for something else, which led to the hippie look, which became Funkadelic. About as anti-Motown as you could get. By the time we got to Hollywood, we were already on our way. I even got a place not far from here, right down the street on Hollywood and Vine. And I lived on Hollywood and King with my ex-manager, Charlie. He's here somewhere, I saw him. So I know this, I know this hood right here, I know these streets. <laughs> the World Funk headquarters was our office on Vine. I know what it means to, look, to see these names on the streets, see these stars. I've often looked at them in was dreaming that one day I might be, you know, down here myself. Even though I hung out on this street, <laughs> up to no good, y'all. <laughs> I see a lot of faces that I remember. <laughs> but I lived in the 70s, so I know what happened on these streets at night, along with hookers, hippies, and druggies, of which I was one. <laughs> but I'm cool now. So I keep shit in perspective. One thing I realize is that there is not a single name on this street that did it by themselves. There are so many that I stand on that I can't name them all. But for each and every one of you, I give thanks. Knowing that the foundation of this career, the fuel for this journey, while my name is the one you read, it is all of your energies that helped us get through this effort. After I did it, oh, I'm going to name some of them. I can't name them all. Like I said, there's a million of them, you know, from the Bootsy, the Gary Titus, the Tyle Ross, the Grady Thomas, the Fuzzies, the Glenn, the Eddie Hazel, the Bernie Warrells, Clip Payne. I mean, I could do this all day long. Y'all know. You know what I'm talking about. It's a lot of people, plus the fans and the family. My family, you see right here, my wife, Carlan, and every bit of the family. 
throughout this journey has helped me do this, has been on my side to help me go get, you know, got me standing here looking at this star on the walk of the Hall of Fame at a special moment. I got to tell y'all, it ain't just about me. It's about all of us. Let me give extra mad love to the musicians and singers, P-Funk crew. I see Lynn Mabry over there, <laughs> Sidney Barnes over here, Pat Lewis over here, Greg Thomas. People that started with us in the 50s, in the 60s. We've been here, we've been doing this, we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> That's, and all the fans, the ones who got down with the funk and still be funkin', like P-Funk 1, the dude has been going to every one of our shows forever. The old fans and new fans who let the music move their soul, y'all all know who you, I'm talking about. I've always said, if it's the people who make the funk, I'm blessed to have been a part of this cosmic slot. <laughs> Thanks to the Omega Sci-Fi brothers who adopted Tom and Dog as their <laughs> national anthem, keeping it relevant for over 40 years. Damn, 40 years. <laughs> now, as we drop the star on the Walk of Fame, let it be a symbol, not just for George Clinton, but for the power of the funk, the power of unity of one nation under a groove. And this acknowledgement does not mark a destination, even a pause, because we're still going forward. You see, I was encouraged by rappers like Snoop, Dre, Cube, De La Soul, Outkast, Digital Underground, Tupac, Kendrick, by the rock acts like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Prince, all those who said the funk inspired them in one way or another. They used the DNA of the funk, and that inspired me to go on. Inspired to go on in my fight. Thank you, Ben Crump. The fight for the rights, the rights, the musical rights. Not just for me, but for all those rights that has been mishandled. Thank you. Thank you, Hollywood.